Hey guys, this is Steve, and today I'm here to talk to you about Replay Basketball, designed by Dave Leparco and distributed by Replay Publishing. It was originally put out in 2003 with a component redesign in 2011, which is the version I'll be reviewing today. It's for one to two players, and a game's going to take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to play. So, in the professional game, an outcome is going to be determined both by the makeup of the team and by the individual stars that are on the floor. And Replay Basketball attempts to recreate that and capture it on your tabletop. So what do I think? Does Replay Basketball hit the three-pointer at the buzzer and win the game? Or does it hit an air ball? Well, before I tell you what I think, let's open the box, look at the components, and show you how the game plays out. So, opening up the box, you'll see there's some very nice game components that come inside. The first of which is the game board itself, which is a trifold board that's very sturdy, has some nice colors on it, and also contains uh, several charts that were in the booklet in the previous version. So that's a nice upgrade with these new components. Mm -hmm. There's also a orange pawn that you'll use to remember which player currently has the ball. There's a quick reference sheet that has all the all the possession results right on it. A time card with a yellow poker chip that you use to just move, um, keep track of the time of the quarter. And then there's this fast action card deck. It's 144 cards. And what this does, this replaces the die rolls. Um, this is the no dice version of the game. And these are going to determine the made and missed shots, rebounds, and which player is going to have possession of the ball on the next turn. There's also a booklet that comes with the game that details some rare plays that can come up, and then also the instruction booklet. There's eight teams that come in the box, and they're always going to be the last eight playoff teams of the most recently available season, which, as of this review, it's the 2011-2012 season. So let's take a uh, just a quick look at one of the player cards, and then I'll show you how a sample possession works out. So let's take a quick look at a couple of team cards. Here we see the Boston and Miami teams. And what's going to be on the card is this away and home index. And it's going to be uh, from 1 to 5. And that's going to indicate how well the team played both on the road and at home, with 1 being the best and 5 being the worst. And that's going to come into account on some loose balls that'll come up and the tendency to get those calls going your team's way. Their fast break offense and defense, again it's one through five with one being the best and five being the worst. And then their three point defense and then their ability to prevent three point attempts completely. And then there's also a, a depth chart down at the bottom that'll show you who the starters were and then who the main subs were. Let's take a quick look at one of the cards and then we'll go through a sample possession of play. All right, so here's a close-up look at one of the player cards and a couple of the fast action cards. The player card is going to tell you their their prowess at getting a offensive and defensive rebound and then their their shooting percentages. Uh, down here is their defensive rating. It's going to be rated from a 1 to a 6 with 1 being the best and uh, 6 being the worst. And then down at the bottom just gives a quick overview of what their actual stats were during the season. But the main meat of the card is here in this 6x6 six six grid that's going to play right off of, of these cards. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to look um, when you flip over a card for new possession, you're going to look at the red die and that's going to tell you which column you're going to go to and then the white die is going to tell you which row you go to. So with 6-2 you'd go to the 6-2 part here and then that's going to tell you what happens on that possession. So for in, in this instance, the first thing that's going to happen, you when you start a possession, you flip over a card. This is going to tell you who gets the ball, which is our point guard here. And then you flip over our next card to see what happens. So we're going to go to the column two, row one. And it says here that he scores a two-pointer unless that raised number there, if the blue die is higher than that, then he would take a three-pointer. In this case, he do it's not higher. So Rondo takes a step back, takes a jump shot, and hits a two-pointer. And that's just how fast the possession can play out. Let's show you what it's like with the whole team on the board. Okay, so we'll pick things up right after the Rondo two-pointer. So now Miami has the ball. We slide the clock down one for the change of possession. 
flip the card over. And in this case, instead of it showing a specific player who gets the ball, it's saying it's a coach's choice, and then it's looking for one of those numbers that's in the top right-hand part of the card. In this case, it's looking for a number one player. And these numbers, again, they refer to how involved a player is in the offense, with one being the highest and five being the lowest. Miami has two players, both Wade and James with the one. So we'll give James the ball, and then he'll take a shot, flip over the next card. We're looking at the column one, row six. And on James's card, we look down here, column one, row six, it just simply has a two. That means that um, he's able to just get right by the defense, score a two-pointer, and ties the game up. So it's 2-2, ball goes back to Boston, slide the clock ahead one, flip the card over for possession, it's another coach's choice one, so in this case we'll give the ball to Pierce, we'll see if he can answer back, flip the card over, and we're looking at the column two, row six on Pierce, and then we see on Pierce that the column two, row six it's a blank space and when there's a blank space on a card that just means that the player misses so we have our first miss shot so we go back to this card and this first line below the blue die that tells us what happens on a rebound opportunity so in this case the offensive point guard you're gonna add six to his offensive rebound rating and then he's gonna go up against the defensive shooting guard and whichever one has the highest number they get the rebound. So we add a 6 to Rondo's offensive rating, which gives a total of 11, versus Dwayne Wade's 9. So Rondo will grab the offensive board. He kicks it back out. We move the clock down again, and then Boston would get another chance at a shot. All right, so there's replay basketball. And overall, I have to say, I really enjoy this game. It's a very fun, enjoyable, um, yet you know, statistically accurate game that'll you know give you very satisfying results. The game engine, you know, it uh, takes a little while to get used to, but basically, all the results are going to be right on this uh, this you know quick reference chart. And you know, once you get the flow of a game, you're going to take anywhere from an hour to hour and a half to play it. Although that first you know couple of games is probably going to take about two hours. The nice thing about this engine is that it works really well for different eras of basketball. Uh, for instance, they just recently released the 79-80 season, which has Bird and Magic's rookie year in there. Very, very fun set to play if you get a chance to pick that up. And that, if you play a game of that, it's going to feel a little different than if you play a game, say, from the early 2000s, where there was a you know better defense and lower scoring games. And you know the, this uh, game handles them both really well. So, you know, if you're looking for a fun tabletop game of basketball, head on over to Replay Games, pick up Replay Basketball, and you're really going to enjoy it. Thanks for listening, guys. My name's Steve, and I'll see you next time.